stopped off here at what they call the Presidio in San Francisco, which is actually the home of Lucasfilm. You can see out here in front, they have a statue of uh, one of the wisest members of the Star Wars universe, Yoda. You excited, Jen? I'm so excited. This alone was worth the trip to San Francisco. This is the only reason you came out to San Francisco? Be able to see Yoda. Are you a fan of Yoda's work? I am. I am. The force is strong with Yoda. Now here's the front office of Lucasfilm. And unfortunately, they do not allow visitors um, currently. They, they previously allowed visitors, but they have not opened back up after the pandemic. And uh, you can see R2-D2 right there in the lobby. And then back there, looks like a statue of a King Kong, or almost like a model of King Kong. And there's an artist moving the stop motion uh, puppet there. You can see they have some other things in there. There's cases of movie awards, of Darth Vader, and then there's that robot from Rogue One. I kind of wonder whose Tesla this is with the license plate that actually says Pixar. While we were out here on the Presidio, I figured we would check out the Walt Disney Family Museum, a museum dedicated to the man himself, Walt Disney, and his creation of his empire and his creation of the beloved Disney parks. So please follow me. As we enter here, see a lot of awards presented to Mr. Walt Disney. Looks like we even got a, a uh, glass slipper there. Yeah, it looks like a tremendous amount of awards by Walt Disney. There's a conservation award shaped like a gorilla. There is a award shaped like a llama, which I can't read because it is in Spanish. There's an award down here presented to Walt Disney from the U.S. Navy. That is a CB. No, uh, Walt Disney helped create uh, American, uh, you know, you call, I guess you'd call it propaganda during, uh, during the wars. Okay, this is pretty amazing. This is the furniture from Walt's Disneyland apartment. The apartment, which is still there, but sits empty. It's above the, the uh, fire department in uh, Disneyland. There used to be a pole. You could actually climb up into his apartment. <laughs> And uh, you can see him and his family there enjoying the apartment that uh, this furniture was in. This section here talks about the early life of Walt Disney. We get to see Walt Disney as a nine-month-old baby. These are some of the members of the Walt Disney family here. And then this is Elias Disney's fiddle. That would have been Walt's father. Now, I actually didn't know this. Walt Disney was in the military during World War I in France, and he drove an ambulance much like this one. Of course, Walt began his career as a cartoonist, actually drew the cartoons himself. There's an actual piece of his artwork there. It's a little different than the Disney look that we'd come to know and love. There's a man smoking a cigar. It says, fill up my can says develop your sense of humor and eventually it will develop you. This pouch here is I guess mementos that uh, Walt collected while overseas during World War I. Some medals in there as well as just some coins that he would have collected traveling around Europe. Some of the early animation equipment. This is a model here of a camera that we used to record animation. This is a universal camera 
would have been used by Walt and his partners at their uh, Laughagram Studios. And into the elevator here. Is that supposed to be? It's like it's supposed to be like a train window right yep. there. Oh no! Don't don't play with that. <laughs> oh, I guess it would help if we uh, if we hit uh, the actual button. It was a big day, the day I got on that California Olympic. I just was free and happy, you know. It was in 1923. I failed. I think it's important to have a good part to pay here when you go. You know? And we see in here where Walt goes to Hollywood. So yeah, the first character Disney worked with was not Mickey Mouse. It wasn't even Oswald. It was Alice. This little girl going on adventures here. See, she's actually played by an actor interacting with the animated characters. It says this wall here with all these different frames of animation. This comprises 15 seconds of uh, the cartoon Steamboat Willie. And here we see the precursor to Mickey Mouse. Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Disney's uh, creation before Mickey Mouse. You can see the poster up there. It actually has a complicated history where Disney actually lost control of Oswald, lost the intellectual property of Oswald, and would not get him back into until the 2000s. So actually losing Oswald would have led to the direct creation of Mickey Mouse as his replacement. And here is the birth of Mickey Mouse, one of the most endearing characters of all time. And this is unbelievable. This is the earliest known drawing of Mickey Mouse. This may not have been the first, but uh, the, the, the oldest surviving drawing of Mickey Mouse. You can actually see an early version of Minnie right there as well. Some more sketches here of Mickey Mouse. You can see where they were plotting out the cartoon. We have a synchronizing sound game here. We'll start the game. Let's see, ready to match the sound effects to Steamboat Willie. Okay, so we're gonna play Steamboat Willie, and we gotta match the sound effects here. How do we? All right, you pull that, and it makes a weird whining noise. What are we gonna, okay, well we got the crank, the crank over here. Oh, oh you got the xylophone there? <laughs> I did. There we go. And here we have the wall of Mickey. From a very early age, Mickey was uh, everywhere. One of the most reproduced characters. You can see some early Mickey Mouse toys there. All different varieties of Mickeys here. It's like a Mickey on a train car. You can see all the different Mickeys there. A bunch of different styles of classic Mickeys. There's a Mickey Mouse Club vest. Complete with Fez cap. If you actually peek out the window here, it's a pretty beautiful view of the Golden Gate Bridge. Some random artifacts over here. We have Walt's skis. Apparently, Walt liked to ski every now and then. See the animation here changing and growing into different ideas. Let's see Walt Disney's The Practical Pig. Here's one I've absolutely never heard of. Walt Disney's Mer Babies. Some animation plates here from a 1937 cartoon, The Old Mill. See the glass plate right there. Here's some maquettes or like physical mock ups of animation. See Goofy there. And they would use these, base, base their animation off them. This is the brave little tailor version of Mickey Mouse. Some of cats of 
Pluto there. And that animation cell. Got Donald Duck there at a picnic. This is pretty interesting, the original concept for, for Goofy. His name was not originally Goofy, it was Dippy the Goof. So he just, he was a goof. His name wasn't Goop, Goofy. His first name was Dippy. So that he actually went by Dippy Dog in some places. See the different paints here that be used by animators. See the bright colors there, how they're applied. The little pig figurines there. We got some little pig animation, including the big bad wolf there blowing down the straw house. I love the ugly dog Got Ferdinand the bull there. There's his maquette. Oh, that's the ugly duckling. But Disney's first success in the movie industry wasn't with Mickey Mouse, it was with Snow White. This was the biggest thing in the world when uh, Snow White came out. And you can watch it today and just see how the animation would absolutely blow people away from that time period. I mean, it still holds up as being beautiful animation to this day. You can see the seven dwarves there. You know, the seven, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves it existed as a story, but Disney actually created the uh, names and personalities of the dwarves. Shows here how human characters were made. They actually had actors dress up as the character, and artists would take their direct inspiration from the actors. See some of the merchandise that came out when uh, Snow White hit the theaters. See masks of the Seven Dwarves. There's a mask of Dopey. Some cutout dolls and dresses. Oh, you can see all the dwarves in Snow White. You can put the cut these clothes out and put them on them. That was like a big deal back in the day. The cutout paper dolls, some figurines, alarm clock there, some dolls of Snow White. It's a facsimile of an old animation desk. You can see the sketches there of Pinocchio. And the other characters from Pinocchio. Figures of Geppetto and Figaro the cat. And there is Gideon. Gideon right there. And Honest John. These are maybe one of the low key, most awful Disney villains. They actually lure away Pinocchio on his way to school. They're constantly luring him away, trying to make a profit off of a naive school child. Sell him into slavery on uh, several different occasions. They're, they're, they're horrific monsters. And there's Jiminy Cricket. Serves as Pinocchio's conscience, telling him when he's doing something that may be ill-advised. You can see Pinocchio there. There's actually some animation there of Pinocchio smoking a cigar. It says, uh, an, inhal an inhalation so fierce. There's some drawings and figurines from Fantasia. Now, I never really understood this as a kid. I remember being so confused on why the cartoon characters were not talking and there was just music playing. Well, I could probably go back and uh, give it a watch as an adult and appreciate it a lot more. Now, here's an exhibit on the Disney strike. Apparently, the animators went on strike against the uh, Disney Studio. It says, Are We Mice or Men? Snow White and the 700 Dwarves. It says, Three years college, two years art school, five years animation, grand total, one hamburger stand. Yeah, they were pretty angry at old Walt. One genius against 1,200 guinea pigs. We have Dumbo. One of the very saddest Disney movies. See Dumbo there, his big ears, and his only friend. Oh, here's some of the crows. The crows actually apparently are controversial. I think the the leader of the crows is actually named Jim Crow, which is is a uh, is a little dicey. This is very interesting here. This is some of the wartime propaganda that uh, Walt Disney created. You know, helped uh, raise awareness of the Nazis, what they were doing made some patriotic cartoons supporting the war effort. See here, the story of one of Hitler's children. So yeah, some pretty, pretty, pretty intense stuff. 
Let's see, this is a magazine called A Day with Walt. You can see on this issue here, you actually have Donald Duck throwing something in Hitler's eye. Yeah, the classic Nazi-themed Disney cartoon, The Fuhrer's Face, where uh, Donald Duck has a nightmare that he is a Nazi. You can see some of these cartoons here that were used as mascots during World War II. That's like a grasshopper there. It's a fighting mosquito. I think the boxing gloves seem to be a recurring theme. I guess the fighting mosquitoes, the fighting eagles, and the fighting grasshoppers. It's a war-themed book here. The Gremlins, made by Walt Disney. They actually would reuse these Gremlin characters for uh, the video game Epic Mickey, one of my favorite video games of all time, where they uh, bring back a lot of obscure Disney characters. We have some Mr. Toad artwork. There's the uh, Mr. Toad maquettes. Mr. Toad and his friends there. That's just amazing to see all these classic animation cells. These classic movies. Alice in Wonderland. Lady and the Tramp here. The Siamese cats. Love these sketches of these pirates from Peter Pan. Down here we have Shmi, an unfinished version of Wendy there. Here is an underwater camera used in filming 20,000 leagues under the sea. And then we have a model of the Nautilus for 20,000 leagues under the sea. So cool. Here's some of Walt Disney's miniatures, it's like little dollhouse furniture. It said that uh, Walt Disney had intended to create uh, historical miniatures to put on display. I think he ended up doing things a little grander than that. Some personal family items from the Disney family. There's Walt's uh, bowling bag. He says Walt. Here's some gifts that Walt had uh, given his daughters over the years that they have donated to the museum. Here is the Oscar necklace. Apparently Walt had an Oscar necklace commissioned so he'd have a necklace that had one of each Oscar he'd won. Man, he won a lot of Oscars. Here we have some of Walt Disney's favorite foods. He liked Jello, lemon Jello, Hormel chili con carne, and uh, his canned uh, chili with beans. I guess he was a he was an easy man to please when it came to food. Some more family items. In this case, what is really interesting to me is they have these. Automaton, these wind up toys that Disney purchased while in France. He was fascinated by how they worked, how you crank them up, and the movements they had. I would only have to surmise that maybe that was inspiration for his love of audio animatronics in the future. Walking down this hallway, it's a beautiful view of San Francisco Bay. Wow, you can see the Golden Gate Bridge out there. Talked about a show called True Life Adventure. Apparently it opened with a rotating globe. And that is the globe that rotated. And here is some of the cameras that would have been used on Disney's nature films. And here is the saddle of Zorro. Said that this would be used to film up close images of Zorro on his horse. Said they went out ride with it because it was too bulky and heavy for the horse to ride with. It'll be used in close-up shots. And here we have a bench from Griffin Park. Griffin Park in Los Angeles. And this is very important because Walt would sit on these benches in Griffin Park and watch his daughters play on the carousel. And he would think to himself, he shouldn't be sitting on a bench watching them play. He should be in there with them having fun and experience that a whole family could enjoy which helped lead to the concept of the Disney parks and how the attractions would work where, where whole families could get onto the attraction and enjoy it together. And look at this. This is the room dedicated to the Disney parks. You can see this miniature train here. This train was actually meant to ride you can see there's actually a seat on there 
where Walt could ride here on the miniature railroad. It says this is the original model of the Fantasyland Castle. So I guess this would be the model that would lead to the creation of uh, Sleeping Beauty's Castle in Disneyland. And look at this. It's a model of Disneyland. You can see you enter there through Main Street USA. Got Space Mountain right here. Oh, you can see the Astro Orbiter rotating right there. We go over here to the Matterhorn bobsled. See the monorail there as well as the submarine ride. Looking down on Fantasyland there, you can see both the teacup swirling as well as Dumbo flying through the air. Oh, you look at that, that ride building there. You can see both Peter Pan's flight and you can see Mr. Toad there on one of his uh, automobiles. You can see back here behind Small World, you can see the children dancing. Storybook canals, as well as the Casey Jr. train. And here's the rivers of America here, the different boats. The Mark Twain River boat as it sails around. And this model is just so amazing, all the details. It's like being able to just overlook Disneyland itself. You can look down there into the Carousel of Progress. You can see the narrator. You can see the walkway here winds around the Disneyland model. So you can see it from different angles. We're here down on the ground floor. You can see the train station out front where you'd enter. And you walk through Main Street. You can see the castle there at the end. There's the Jungle Cruise. You can see, oh yeah, you can see the lions there eating the zebra. You can see the rhinoceros has got the people up in the pole. The elephants over there. It's a really detailed model. We have Pirates of the Caribbean. And the Haunted Mansion over there with the hitchhiking ghosts out front. And this is one of my true favorite parts of Disneyland. When you take the train through the tunnel and see the dinosaurs battling. Oh, you can see they still have the people mover here in this model and uh, and the Carousel Progress. So this is a older model. They don't have any of those attractions at Disneyland anymore. Some of the original Autotopia cars, the car ride at Disneyland. Looks pretty swanky. There's a model, the Mark Twain riverboat that travels the rivers of America. And there's a model of the Omni Mover, kind of the all-purpose dark ride vehicle used in different rides such as uh, Little Mermaid and Haunted Mansion. Oh wow, here's some of the architectural plans for Main Street USA. You can see some of the mock-up buildings there and how they plan to build them. Here's some of the old tickets for uh, Disneyland. They had a different ticketing system they do now. Now you pay one price. Well, you pay one price to get in and then you you know you can pay extra to cut the line and whatnot. But originally you were giving a booklet that had different levels of tickets, A, B, C, D, and E. E tickets were the big ones. Those were the big exciting rides and you had the least amount of those. So you'd have to be, uh, you know, you have to be very careful. You couldn't just ride everything. You had to plan out your day, what you wanted to ride. Some Mickey Mouse Club merchandise here. Those classic mouse ears. The less classic duck head. <laughs> and then down here we have the Viking horns with the uh, Mouseketeer logo on it. I did want to take note, they do have some warnings here that uh, you know some of the material is kind of outdated with negative stereotypes and representation. But you know, I think it's commendable. They, they, they leave you the option to still see the things, but you know, acknowledge that some of them uh, could be construed as hurtful. We have an authentic Olympic torch, the 1960 Olympic torch. An audio animatronic parrot right here. Of course, the uh, birds in the Tiki Room, some of the first animatronics 
used by Disney. Now, it looks like we can actually control this animatronic here by, uh, Wait a oh, everyone. there it goes. We audio animatronics characters are always ready to get on with the show. That is what we're made to do. Why, there's audio animatronic pirates, ghosts, <laughs> singing bears, <laughs> residents, <laughs> robots, <laughs> elephants, <laughs> and space aliens. Not to mention geeky birds. Okay, so after we watch the video, it says joystick control in 14 seconds. So after the video is done, we can take control of the bird. These programming joysticks just might be oh, okay. to program the very first audio animatronic book. Try to make his head nod. Now, rock my body forward. Now okay. we're moving. Can you make my chest puff? Can make the chest puff? That's a breath of fresh air. Okay. We'll puff the chest. Okay, there we go. Puff the chest now, there. Turn my head left and right. Turn head left. Wait, and wait, right. Oh, how do you do that? How about opening my beak? Oh, okay, there we go. Say the beak. Beak. You're a natural Turn the beak there. Now let's see what you can really do. Oh, okay. So I'm in complete control of the bird there. Up, down. And I'm moving around. I've never controlled an animatronic before. Let's see. Oh. I can make him move his mouth. You can, uh. There we go. There we go. I can make his make his chest up and down breathe. It's showtime. In the tiki 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 tiki. Oh, he's gonna sing the tiki song for us. Check out this model here. This is the final scene from the uh, Carousel of Progress. This is the uh, home of the future, which is you know comically not exactly futuristic at this point, but still very charming. It's the kitchen there. Sitting there with the, with the family dog. Here we have great moments with Mr. Lincoln. We have a model of the head there, and then actually a piece of the body itself, the metal framework of Abraham Lincoln. You can see some 2D models here of It's a Small World. You can see how they planned out the ride with the different children from different countries. With Mary Poppins here. See, the, this is the original edition of the book with an inscription to Walt Disney. It's a Technicolor DF7 camera. It says this would be used to film actors that would later be inserted into cartoon environments. So yeah, they, Disney would mix cartoons and actors and films like Mary Poppins and Song of the South. Some of Disney's personal effects. His shaving bag there. His camera, his uh, box there where he keeps his watches and jewelry, and then a hat worn by Disney that was shaped into a heart and bronzed. Now these are pictures that would have appeared in newspapers around the country when Walt Disney died. You can see all the sad characters there. You can see Mickey crying with planet Earth. The tears coming down from Mickey. All the characters there around Walt's grave. It's interesting down here on the uh, basement floor of the Disney Family Museum, they have monkey paintings. You can see this chimpanzee here making some artwork. Oh, look at this guy here. He's very determined to make an awesome painting. And yeah, they have all these different animal paintings here. Look at the, the lion footprint. And look at these tiger paintings. You can see like the ferocity in their paint strokes. Some different bear paw prints. We're gonna head over top that big golden looking bridge over there. Stopped off at this beautiful little roadside park here. 
You can see Alcatraz out in the bay there. And there is that big golden bridge. The Golden Gate Bridge, to be more specific. And I guess we're about ready to head over top of it. Side here and enjoy the bridge on foot. We have the luxury of being able to enjoy it by automobile. Look at that big old bridge. Thank you for joining us here today in San Francisco, California as we check out the Disney Family Museum. Museum that documents Walt Disney, the man himself, his rise to prominence in the creation of the Disney parks. If you guys like these videos, please subscribe and let you know when new videos are coming out. I do upload regularly. I've been traveling the United States, filming roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun stuff and continue to this day. If you'd like to support the channel, consider contributing to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling five different styles of enamel pins in the Etsy shop. And all that goes to help keep this train on the track, this boat on the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.